Okay guys, so welcome to this orientation session for the SBR for the December 2023 examination session. I can understand that uh, people who are attending this session would be including the ones who are going to do it in December and would also include the ones who are going to do it in the March 2023 2024 session also. So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'll just let you know the agenda for the session of today. Uh, before I go on to discuss the agenda for today, I let me introduce myself. Uh, myself, Lukman Rafiq. My background is I have been in teaching profession for more than 13 years now. And I've been teaching different subjects, including the financial reporting areas, financial management and the performance management areas. Um, I've been teaching them for the different qualifications, including the ACCA, the ICAEW the CIMA and one of the local Pakistani qualifications, which is ICAP also. I've been conducting uh, trainings and webinars for different corporate institutions. And uh, on several occasions, I think it has been around, I think I've conducted ACCA global webinars on around 12 or 13 occasions where I've been picked up by ACCA to conduct those orientations. Um, so what is the agenda for session of today? I'm going to take you through uh, the strategic business reporting uh, that what exactly is the SBR slavers all about uh, the approach that I'm going to be adapting in order to deliver the SBR and um, um, the different things that are going to be uh, there and what are uh, what, what is the overall plan starting from now till the examination date every single thing I'm going to discuss in the session today. So let's just start off. Let's just go through a few things you have in front of you uh, the strategic business reporting slavers guide for the relevant session, which is the September 2023 uh, till the June 2024 session. So what we are talking about, what we are talking about is the just. Okay, what we are talking about I don't know what happened to this pen. Okay. Okay, what we are talking about is the examination session for the December 2023 and the March 2024. That's what we are talking about. So let's just have a discussion that what exactly is this SBR slavers all about? What are the things that we should be doing? What are the things that we should be going through in order to be good at the SBR level? The slavers guide, I will also share the slavers guide with you people uh, in the WhatsApp groups. Uh, once we get over with the session today, uh, this session is going to be recorded and the recording would also be made available uh, on the uh, YouTube channel of a Scriber Academy. Plus it will also be available on the Facebook of a Scriber. So you could just follow on a Scriber Academy and you could just get access to this. So uh, let's just go on. Uh, first of all, let's talk about a bit of the slavers structure that what exactly uh, before the slavers structure. Number one is that the relational diagram for the SBR. As you could see that uh, SBR has got connections with different uh, subjects and the different subjects with which it has got connections. Uh, it includes the financial accounting, uh, which is also known as F3 the FR paper, which is also known as the F7. And you could see that there is a relationship uh, with the AAA. So one thing that I would want to tell you people is that for those of you who are planning to do AAA, uh, so if you don't have any other paper left, then uh, that's okay. You can do SBR and AAA in one single attempt. But if you want to do AAA in the next attempt, and if I mean, like if you can wait for the next attempt, then ideally do SBR first and then AAA because 50% of the AAA is the reporting. So whatever the reporting knowledge that you get, 50% of it is applicable in the audit and assurance paper, the AAA paper. So it's always advisable that you do AAA later on and do SBR earlier. Anyways, that was just a relationship diagram. An important thing is that uh, how exactly is this SBR paper examined? So the way the SBR paper is examined is that you have got um, a three hour and 15 minute paper. That's number one thing. Number two thing is that there is a section A which contains two questions. 
with one of the questions being of 30 mark and the other question is going to be of 20 marks then you have got section B which again has got two questions and both of the question 3 and the question 4 they're gonna be worth 25 marks each 25 marks each so that's what the that's what the examination structure is now what I want to discuss is that uh, ACC has specifically defined the structure they have specifically advised that what topic are going to be examined in what part of the uh, syllabus so let me just discuss about this <clears throat> number one of them is that when we talk about the part uh, question number one that is sure short sure going to be a question on consolidation but don't think that when it comes to SBR it's going to be pure pure consolidation no it is going to be consolidation with different accounting standards also being examined this is specific question the question number two uh, this is usually usually uh, the past experience suggests that this is a question which has got uh, amongst other things the ethical implications also so like what it includes is that it includes uh, the normal whatever accounting standards whatever the accounting that is examined plus some of the ethical accounting standards also ethical implications also then you have got question number three and the question number three usually is a mixed IFRS so it's a question which is on multiple IFRS question number four is IFRS plus current issues IFRS plus current issues that's what question number four is so now I'm going to discuss each one of them that what is going to be there with respect to consolidation what is going to be there with respect to ethical implication and the mixed IFRS and all that I'm going to give you a bit of an idea also as I move forward but just to uh, give you a good bit of an idea this is what the syllabus is going to be so we have discussed the relational diagram we have discussed the approach to the examination of the syllabus which is a three hour 15 minute paper with section A and section B section A um, having two questions section B having two questions now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss the key areas of the syllabus so here you have um, these are the different syllabus areas that we have got uh, the number one of them is the fundamental ethical and professional principles that's one area then you have got the financial reporting framework that's number two area then you have got reporting the range of financial performance entity three group entities four interpretation five impact six and then number seven employability and technology skills what I always do is that I start explaining this area first I start explaining this area first to the students that what is this area going to be all about so let me just guide you you people know it that uh, all of the papers of ACCA are now computer-based examination paper the paper that you are being examined is based on word is based on spreadsheet so it's actually based on word it's based on a spreadsheet that's what it is now when I talk about uh, this whole so if you have the capability of handling the computer based examination if you have the capability of going about uh, in different exhibits going about typing out in the word typing out in the spreadsheet handling the spreadsheet formula for etc so this is actually going to show the employability and technology skills so when it comes to this specific area there is no rocket science involved it's simply what you need to do is that you need to be aware of the ACCA examination software that what exactly is the ACCA's examination software all about and you should have grip over that ACC examination software once you have the grip over the ACC examination software once you are able to do the questions on the ACC examination software that means you are able to demonstrate the employability and technology skills now let's move a bit forward I would want to discuss something <laughs> with respect to this employability and technology skills which is that some of you students would be coming from an exemption or would be living in that part of the world where uh, the computer-based examination were 
implemented a bit later. So you might not have actually seen how the ACCA CB practice platform works. So I, you don't have to worry about it because when I'll be taking you through further, I will also be giving you guidelines as to how you use the ACCA CB practice platform plus the practice questions that I will be doing. They will also be on the ACCA CB practice platform to whatever extent I can because there is a one drawback that I have when I do those questions on the ACCA platform, which is that when I save the answers, I cannot save the Excel formula um, because the Excel formula don't get saved. Um, you can just extract, you can just copy the Excel in the form of PDF. So just to preserve the formula, my preference is at times to do it in Excel, but still I will be guiding you through how to handle the CV platform. So one of the areas which is the employability and technology skills is nothing to be worried about. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's a straightforward area that you would be going through. Now let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further. The next area is fundamental ethical and professional principles. Now what do you mean by fundamental ethical and professional principles? So uh, usually what happens is that when we study the double A paper, we do study the code of ethics. And we know that uh, what is the code of ethics all about? The code of ethics is the code that every professional accountant should follow and which includes several fundamental ethical principles. And with respect to the SBR, this area is a regular feature of the examination. And this area is approximately tested for around seven to 12 marks in every single attempt that you would come across for the SBR. Now, how is this area tested? So what would happen is that the examiner is gonna give you a scenario. There could be that you might actually be preparing financial statement. There could be that you might actually be reviewing financial statement, things like that. And what happens is that uh, the company's results may be reflecting adverse position or you might actually have to, you might actually be forced to show better position of the company. You might actually be forced to recognize revenue earlier, things like that. Anything that could ultimately lead to manipulating the financial statement, you could be given such type of a scenario. So what you would have to do as a student is that you would have to deal, you would have to identify that scenario. You would have to explain the ethical uh, dilemmas that are involved and you would then have to suggest solutions for it that how exactly are you going to come out of it. So that is what it is going to be. So number one of them is the fundamental and ethical principles. The knowledge base is not new. Knowledge base is something that you bring about from the audit and assurance paper, but uh, the application skills is a bit different. The application skills are a bit different. So the application skills are going to be a bit different. You would have to, you would have to apply your uh, application skills to the given scenario. That's what you would have to do. So we would be going through this ethical and the professional principles and would see that how it goes about. Then there is this financial reporting framework. So you know that uh, there is a IASB conceptual framework. What is this IASB conceptual framework? The IASB conceptual framework gives you an overall guideline as to what the accounting principles are, what are the principles that should be kept in mind when we are, when we are actually, uh, uh, when we are, when, an, when any accounting standard is being created or whenever, or uh, uh, whenever uh, the accounting is being done. So what are the fundamental principles? What are the things that you should keep in mind? So this ISB conceptual framework is examined uh, at the SBR level also. And generally what happens is that uh, it is usually examined as a theoretical area, but at times it is also examined uh, in a computational aspect to create a distinction between IFRS and framework. So at times you could actually be given a scenario where the examiner might say that um, 
distinguish the accounting that would be under the IFRS and distinguish between the accounting that would be there under the uh, uh, framework. So what you would have to do is that you would have to discuss both aspects of the accounting. So that's another area. So up till now, what have I done? I've discussed with you people two areas. One of them is the fundamental and ethical principle area. I have discussed with you the financial reporting framework area. Now, next you go about, so you see these three sections, the reporting of financial performance, the group entities, and the interpretation of financial statements. Let me just guide you. So this specific area includes all the IFRS. This specific area include all the IFRS. Like there are, there is a complete list of IFRS. I'm gonna come to the core areas of IFRS also, but there is a complete list of IFRS that you would have to follow. So when we would be talking about that complete list of IFRS that you would have to follow. So those all IFRS are covered under this section number three, which makes it one of the core areas of the slavers. Similarly, you talk about the group entities. So there is a complete group accounting. Uh, which include everything which includes the subsidiary which include associate would include joint venture which includes the foreign subsidiary etc 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 plus even the group cash flow also so there are multiple things that we are going to be covering into this specific section and again as you know that this is going to be question number one of the uh, examination so it's an area which is important, which is something you just cannot miss out. Recently, there have also been changes to the way it's been examined. Recently, there are also changes to the way it's being uh, examined. So basically what happens is that um, uh, if there has been changes in the way it has been examined, so uh, we would be doing the latest practice questions also. And now there will be more and more questions available to handle that practice. Then lastly, the interpreting financial statements for different stakeholders. Uh, you, have, you have studied ratios and when it comes to the performance management, you have also include, you have also studied the non-financial performance indicators. Now what actually happens is that, see there are different types of stakeholders. You can have suppliers, you can have lenders, you can have equity holders, you can have financial institutions, you could have other institutions who have invested in your business, you could have different different type of people who could be investing in your business. Now what actually happens is that every single person who invests in a business has got a different way of evaluating the performance because everyone has got a different objective, everyone has got a different target, everyone has got a different uh, uh, purpose. So they find different ways of calculating the performance, evaluating the performance in a different manner. So when we'd be talking about the interpreting financial statement for different stakeholders. So it's not just going to be restricted towards the ratios. It's going to be the ratios. It's going to be the other type of uh, um, different measures that we would be using for the financial statement. And then we would also be commenting on performance that how exactly has been the performance. So multiple things are gonna be covered up in this specific area, which is interpreting financial statements for different stakeholders. Lastly, there's an area which is the impact of changes in accounting regulations. This is also termed as current issues. This is also termed as current issues. Now, what exactly are the current issues all about? So when we talk about the concept of current issues, the concept of current issues is that uh, there are some uh, new accounting standard, plus there are some proposed changes to the accounting standard. Um, so when I talk about the current issues, there are some new accounting standard. There are some proposed changes to the accounting standards. There are some discussion papers. There are some exposure draft. I'll just guide you what they are. So what happens is that 
some new accounting standard that's being issued plus uh, some accounting issue that is causing a problem so that's being under discussion uh, uh, for the IASB there might actually be uh, some proposed changes to the accounting standard that could also be the case plus there could be a exposure draft exposure draft is an accounting standard in a draft format I mean like immediately before it gets finalized the final draft is called exposure draft which is open for the public comments so what happens is that if there is any changes in the accounting standard whether recently enacted or being proposed those changes are being discussed and you are being examined that what is going to be the impact of these on the accounting treatment of the existing uh, financial statements. So this area is regularly examined by the examiner and it is termed as current issues and under this current issue they test that okay just guide us what would be the impact what is going to happen etc etc etc. So from the perspective of the examination this strategic business reporting is no more termed as financial reporting because uh, it's not just financial reporting it's reporting of the business at a strategic level at the strategic level you would be reporting and you would not just be preparing financial statement you might actually be uh, preparing financial statement you would be giving management commentaries you would be giving an analysis you would be performing ratio analysis you would be considering the ethical considerations etc etc that's what actually happens so this paper the strategic business reporting it just is just not restricted to reporting it's a comprehensive paper which is reporting plus the other aspects that the top management would consider when they would be looking at any specific business now this was about a bit about the slabus areas i'll go a bit further and i will just guide you people through this specific area which is the reporting the financial performance of a range of entities as I said that this is purely IFRS so when it is purely IFRS so technically this is the core area of the slavers also where you've got IFRS 15 about the revenue recognition the non-current assets all of the accounting standard majority which we have discussed in the financial reporting I mean the lower level paper which includes the IS 16, IS 40, IS 20, IS 23, IS uh, IFRS 5 etc 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 so the multiple accounting standards that cover up the non-current asset including IS 38 all of the accounting standards are examinable then financial instrument which is mainly IFRS 9 then leases which is the IFRS 16 employee benefits IS 19 IS 12 which is the income taxes then you have got uh, some provisions contingencies then there is another which is IFRS uh, 2 and then IFRS 13 so there are other specific I mean like there are these multiple core areas of the slabus and these core areas of the slabus what are they majorly focused upon their major focus of these accounting standards is that they cover up revenue, they cover up leases, they cover up financial instrument, they cover up share based payment. So different different aspects are going to be covered up in here. So now what happens is that how exactly should we be preparing for the SBR? So let me just guide you about some of the key tips for the SBR. Um, so when I talk about the key tips for SBR okay let me just take you people through the key tips for passing this SBR paper you see what happens is that SBR paper is a comprehensive paper and if you wish to pass the SBR number one of them is the group accounts there is nothing that you can skip with respect to the group accounts there's nothing that you can skip with respect to the group accounts that's important you drag curl and all that 
there is nothing that you can skip with respect to group accounts it's a mandatory 30 mark question it's a mandatory area of the syllabus and you got to make sure that you have got good grip over the group accounts that's very very important that's one thing the second thing that you have to consider is that uh, when it comes to this uh, SBR the IFRS especially the new IFRS that are examined at the SBR level for the very first time so you got to make sure that the new IFRS that the new IFRS are not missed out at all if you're gonna miss out any new IFRS you will be at a risk because at times what happens is you can even get a 25 mark question on new IFRS what do we mean by those new IFRS as I said that you've got IS 19 you've got IFRS 2 you have got financial instrument accounting standard at times you have got the leases accounting standard at times even is 12 question there could be multiple things that could possibly be examined right there could be multiple things that could possibly be examined so that's could happen right so this is something that uh, is gonna be there now the next thing is that um, um, the third thing is the interpretation area see I have seen in the past where the examiner has tested interpretation for 17 mark for 18 marks and the students they have struggled because probably there is a ratio which is called EBITDA the earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization they did not actually know what is EBITDA all about so you got to make sure that you cover up these areas of the syllabus plus you got to make sure you practice the ethical scenarios because as I said that from 7 to 12 marks that's what the weightage of the ethical scenarios so ethical scenarios you've got a weightage of approximately 7 to 12 mark you got to make sure that you practice some ethical scenarios so that once they come into the examination so you don't have to worry about them you don't have to worry about handling them and lastly I would say that uh, current issues now see some of you might say that uh, what is left you have covered up almost everything that means every important every syllabus aspect is important yes every syllabus aspect is important but there has to be a key emphasis on this area this area and this area these are the core areas if you focus on these three areas I can guarantee you a pass provided you practice you practice the past examination question if you don't practice the past examination question it's not going to work out for you so you got to make sure that you practice the past examination question right now what is going to be my approach uh, of teaching this SBR so let me just take you people through um, I think that uh, you could see my screen um, uh, on the screen let me just uh, take you through okay I've just opened up the website of Scriber Academy uh, the website's name is scriberacademy.com when you're gonna open the website you would see this pop-up window so you might click on this ACCA extensive courses and when you would click on this ACCA extensive courses so you could just go on there even in fact the SBR course is available in here the English SBR or even you could type out the SBR also you could just go on to this SBR and uh, let me see if I can just zoom in yes I can zoom in okay good enough so see what I've done is that I've made you people available uh, pre-recorded lectures for the different topics like IFRS 16 leases like IFRS 15 revenue financial instruments every single accounting standard is being made available plus even those accounting standard that you have covered at the that you have covered at the FR level I've made sure that I make them available also to you people so they are also available now what happens is that uh, in addition to all this what is actually going to happen is that let me just guide you um, there's a there's a study plan that I have prepared this study plan is on the basis of I repeat the study plan is on the basis of um, the study plan is on the basis of the on the basis of the lectures that are available on the portal and uh, what I have done is I have uh, given you a detailed study plan uh, and the study plan is such 
that every week there are certain topics that you got to make sure that you cover them up and uh, we shall be meeting up once a week and during our meeting what i would be doing is that i would be taking your queries pertaining to the topics that were supposed to be discussed uh, that that were supposed to be covered by you during the week so like let's say for example if ifrs 8 and the ifrs 16 are to be covered up in the first week so i would expect that when i would be conducting my class on 21st of september so i would expect that by 21st of september you would have completed go, going through the lectures on ifrs 8 operating segments and ifrs 16 leases so that once you come to the class you are prepared you have got questions in hand you can ask the questions and get answers to your queries then and there so that's something that's going to happen see number 2 so this is uh, this is going to go on until until what date until uh, the until the 20th of november so after the 20th of november on the 21st of november and the 22nd of november we shall be having a two day revision marathon session that would be around uh, approximately 8 to 10 hours over the period of two days um, and uh, during those revision marathon session i would be taking you people through Uh, the examination practice questions probably then we have got mock 1 and mock 2 planned so every single student who would enroll with us they would be able to uh, they would be eligible to attempt the mock mock 1 and mock 2 and you could just submit your mock we would even check those mocks we would review those mocks and we would uh, give you a feedbacks on to those mocks so that you can have an idea that what are the areas you are lacking uh, what are the improvement areas uh, what are the specific weaknesses that you have so that could actually be acting as a guidance so overall this is the approach that we uh, intend to adapt uh, hopefully inshallah if everything goes well i mean this is the plan that we would uh, adapt and uh, this plan is only going to be successful if you people uh, if you people contribute how would you contribute if you could just follow Uh, the plan and if you could stick to the plan and if you could be prepared according to the plan and you know what with the with the online education the convenience has increased but at the same time it requires a lot of self discipline if you don't have self discipline you just cannot survive and i'm sure that all of you now are in the professional stage uh, you must be having a lot of self discipline but again pep talk is always necessary so don't worry i'm there to do pep talk with you people just to convince you just to motivate you just to make sure that you are on the right track and uh, to ensure that you get through so uh, in addition to this one more thing i would like to add up uh, we have teaching assistants also uh, who are going to be part and parcel of the whatsapp groups so you could just communicate in the whatsapp group whatever queries that you have and uh, those teaching assistants they would uh, they would be also there to guide you just in case if i am stuck somewhere and if i am not going to if i am not able to respond back on time so this is uh, a bit of uh, the sbr from my side um, i will just share the schedule with you people also about the classes okay now you can go ahead asking the question mohammed jamal you you are saying we can see the green screen okay i mean like were you not able to see the screen okay abdul rahman abdi rahman farah uh, sir time table would be shared in the whatsapp group okay how about others do you have any queries to ask do you have anything that you would like to have clarifications on <coughs> yeah please anybody Okay, I've got Bipin, I've got Inutu, Inutu Mundia, I've got Ladato, Marjori, Muhammad Jangir Alam, Roshan, Patience, Samit, Awais Ali, Wail Soliman. Anyone having any queries, please? Okay. Lovely. 
okay if uh, i'm just <clears throat> these recorded lectures pertain to which okay i recently i mean like i did the recordings uh, i think around uh, six months back i'll be updating the lectures on the group accounts um because uh, the group accounts uh, practice questions are now available uh, okay the mock uh, we would uh, we would just in try to make sure that we are able to do it in the examination style uh, we had some uh, issue with our lms uh, provider because he was integrating the latest uh, uh, for cb format into our lms he could not do it so that's why we did uh, the mock last time in the word and excel but anyways we would just try to make sure that we are able to do them on the specific platform okay thank you very much guys thanks for your time thanks for being there thanks for attending the session i will inshallah uh, see you again on the uh, 21st of september which is going to be the next class uh, plus those of you who are looking to uh, enroll for the course and have not yet uh, enrolled you could contact our team. This is the number 92345-828-7222. This number is on WhatsApp. Uh, the team is available most of the time. So you could just get in touch with the team uh, and you could contact them. Plus, I would just write down my own number also. Uh, but uh, there is an unfortunate thing, which is usually I am stuck in things. So I'm not able to respond back. Um, so don't be disappointed if i don't respond back on time but i would still uh, share my number just in case if any one of you would like to get in touch it's plus nine two three three one two three six six one six one so thank you very much everyone thank you guys for your time thank you for attending um i'm glad that you all uh, liked the orientation okay no exam changes for uh, the december session Bipin, the changes they have already been implemented since the september so no further changes okay so thank you very much everyone thank you for your time see you inshallah soon and uh, wish you all the best <laughs>